Well, welcome to our online service this morning. The weather's definitely starting to turn, isn't it? Seems odd to me that it was only three weeks ago that I was at the uh, beautiful churchyard in Limpston filming in glorious sunshine. I love being outdoors and spending time with God outdoors. But you know, when it does get a bit greyer and a bit wetter, there's also nothing better than getting home, finding a quiet place and spending some time with God at home and indoors. Well, it's really nice, isn't it, to uh, come in from a, a grey and uh, miserable, quite blustery day, uh, find a warm, quiet spot uh, and just spend some time. I don't know about you, but uh, this has been a really busy time of year. So finding these times of quiet to be by myself, um, but by myself with God have been just fundamental, fundamental. Well, we're going to uh, have our reading now. Sue is going to read for us and then our worship band from Littleham are going to lead us in some worship. The reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter four. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown. Stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you've learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour, we pray, come Holy Spirit. Lord, be with us and fill us and transform us, we pray. Amen. Who here feels right now an abundance of joy? <laughs> just, a, just an enormous wellspring of delight. Well, in the current circumstances, what with one thing and another, no one would blame you if that was very far from what you're feeling. I don't think I'm quite at a wellspring of delight <laughs> at the moment. So I wonder what might be the secret of joy. Well, I can tell you one thing for sure and for definite, God does not want us to pretend. What God wants is total honesty from us. So being joyful is not a matter of pretending everything is okay. It's something we might feel that we need to do when looking at, uh, at the media and, and particularly social media, when you look at Facebook and Twitter, what you're looking at are people's curated lives, airbrushed and photoshopped to make it look as though everything is just wonderful. And of course, what they could be hiding is a reality which is just too painful to admit. God does not want a curated version of our lives. He wants us to come to him uh, with the reality of our lives. Now, you might feel that you can't come to the king of heaven if it is disaster that is gripping your life, especially if you blame God for that disaster. But if you read the Psalms, which is in the, they're in the middle of the Bible, you'll find there things that were originally songs to be sung to gods, and some of them express joy and delight, but some also express despair and rage at God. God wants us to be real. So the secrets of joy and of being joyful and of rejoicing is not faking it until you make it. Don't fake it till you make it. But joy is something that you can choose. How does that work? Well, let me first say that joy is very different from happiness. Happiness is, a, is an emotion uh, and it's mostly dependent on well, other emotions, uh, your relationships, the, the general context of your life. There are things that make you happy and they are generally pretty good. Joy, although it is felt, can be something that you can choose whether you are feeling happy or not. I have a, a friend who is a, a minister uh, in a, another church and he was telling me about uh, a young guy married for, for 10 years who had come to him and he'd said, you know, I'm, I'm really struggling in my marriage because I f just feel like I don't love my wife anymore. I've lost that, that feeling of love and I think that I'm going to have to leave her. And my friends who, who can be really pastoral and really gentle, he chose this moment to be quite direct and he said to this guy, so you lost your feeling of love for your wife? I hadn't realised that love was a feeling. I thought that love was a choice. 
And there is so much truth in that, isn't there? That you have to choose to love and that every day that you choose to love, love grows. And I've certainly found that in my marriage and I see that in many relationships, not just marriage, but, but many relationships uh, around me. And I think that being joyful can be a bit like that. If you choose joy and again choose joy and then you choose to rejoice and it might begin in small ways that you choose joy but every time that you choose joy that you make that choice joy gets easier to choose and joy grows in your life now it's not always possible and sometimes it might be for for very good reason uh, be really very difficult but from this passage that that sue has just read for us i hope to share with you some pointers that might help you to choose joy well this passage that we had read comes from a letter that paul wrote to the church in philippi paul was late to start following in Jesus. He, I mean, in fact, he, he started out persecuting, imprisoning, and even helping in the killing of Jesus' followers. Until, that is, he had an encounter with Jesus who had risen from the dead, and that was the famous encounter on the road to Damascus. And it was an encounter that changed everything. And he became one of the greatest ambassadors for Jesus the church has ever had. He was fiercely intelligent, extremely well educated and tireless in his quest to tell people the truth that Jesus could wholly and completely change their lives and their eternal destiny. Ironically though, he was writing this letter from prison. So Paul, who was instrumental in locking up followers of Jesus for their faith, was in prison now himself because of his faith in Jesus. And he was in prison in Rome, where to cut a long story short, he would be tried by the court and either acquitted and set free or executed. And there was basically a very good chance that he would be executed. So he, he wasn't exactly in his happy place uh, when he wrote this letter. And the church in Philippi was struggling too, and particularly the Gentile Christians, the, the Christians uh, who uh, weren't Jews, they were facing uh, persecution. And so this was the context in which Paul wrote, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Literally in prison, unable to go about his daily life and fearing each day might be his last. What was it that enabled Paul to choose joy in that circumstance? Well, the first thing Paul would say is that you need to spend time with God. Rejoice in the Lord, he says, the God of the universe, creator and sustainer of all things, loves you. It doesn't matter who you are, what your life has been like, whether you believe in God or whether you think that it's all stories for children. God loves you and wants to spend time with you. He came himself. Jesus is part of the mystery of God's love. He is God himself and he paid the price for all that gets between you and God so that you can spend time with him. All of that can be washed away. You can choose God you can choose joy. We ask God into our lives because he doesn't 
force his way in. We say yes to Jesus and God fills us with his Holy Spirit. God himself fills us. And slowly but surely transforms us with his love. He loves us into being a new creation. And in this pandemic, you need to know that God is not in lockdown and God is not in quarantine. And spending time with God is really simple. It can be coming to church, message us if you want to join us, we'd love to see you. But it can be just sitting and reading your Bible. I'd start with a biography of Jesus uh, in the books called Matthew, Mark, Luke and John there near the end of the Bible. And then there's prayer, which is finding, again, a, a quiet place and literally just talking to God about what matters to you. And then sitting quietly as God speaks into your heart or just sitting in silence. I love just sitting in silence with God. And Paul says in, in doing this, in, in his words, not worrying about anything, which is really means not fretting uselessly about something, but by doing something, by praying with thanksgiving, letting your requests be known to God, well then the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds. God wants to hear your prayers. If it matters to you, it matters to God. No matter how big or seemingly small and trivial, you can bring it to God. You can choose joy if you know that God has your back. And then Paul comes with some really practical advice, which is as wise now as it was then. He says, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is uh, anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Now what Paul wouldn't have known, but what we can see immediately, is that that list is pretty much the opposite of what much of the media wants to be your daily diet because what sells newspapers and what works as clickbait is generally not that but instead whatever is untrue unholy unjust impure ugly and vicious i was listening uh, to um, uh, me and my trolls on uh, radio 4 on tuesday night about the phenomenon of uh, of well, not just celebrities, but people in daily life being deliberately and relentlessly trolled, torn down uh, and lied about in, uh, in many cases. Uh, and it was heartbreaking in so many ways, not least in the way that ordinary people get caught up in this perpetuating vicious cycle of, of abuse online. But what was clear to me was that social media platforms thrive on engagement and they have algorithms that run them which are you know, non-sentient, non-human, mathematical. They don't care what keeps people there, they just that they are there because they're programmed to keep people there so that the site makes money from advertising. And so to do that, they promote content that keeps people and they minimize content that doesn't. And sadly, what experience has shown over the years 
as to what keeps people on the sites is whatever is untrue, unholy, unjust, impure, ugly and vicious. Those things do not give you joy. They are poison to your soul. And so we have to choose, deliberately and consciously choose, to read and watch and think about whatever is true, whatever is honourable, just, pure, pleasing and commendable. That is the secret of joy. The little choices we make each day to choose joy and to spend time with God. Because as Bishop Tom Wright says on this, and he is spot on once again, where does peace come from? From the God of peace. Get to know the one and you will have the other. So where does joy come from? From the God of joy. Get to know the one and you will have the other. Amen. Well, let's pray, shall we? God, we thank you that you are Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Father, you love us. You created us and sustained us. Jesus, you died for us and rose again to set us free, free from sin, free from all that binds us. Holy Spirit, you fill us and transform us. God, we thank you that you long to spend time with us and for us to know you. And Lord, we pray that you would fill us with your joy, that you would help us in small ways and in bigger ways to be able to choose joy. And we pray now for our, our world in the grips of this pandemic. God, we pray for all those who are seeking to find a solution. We pray for those who are looking after the sick. Lord, would you bring healing? Lord, we pray for those who are grieving. God, would you be with them? Lord, would you give great inspiration to medics and to scientists who are seeking a way to stop this pandemic. And Lord, we pray for the leaders of our nations. Lord, would you give them wisdom? Would you give them righteousness? And would you give them strength? We pray though also for those closer to home that we know who need God's uh, healing uh, or his presence or his love and we name them before God now. And then we bring to God those things uh, that we need. Thank you, God, that you always hear prayer. You always answer prayer. In one way or another. But God, you always answer. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Amen. Well, thank you so much uh, for being with us this week. Uh, my prayer would be that you would be able to find a quiet place uh, at some point in your week just to sit and to spend some time with God, be that in silence, be that reading one of the biographies of Jesus, uh, however it is. And in doing that, that you would find that each day it'd be easier, slightly easier to choose joy in some small way. Let me bless you 
uh, and, uh, and send you out into uh, the rest of your day. And so the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love now and always. Amen.